So what would you recommend? Because I know that you also deal with tenants. Now, do you also help homeowners that are thinking, hey, I just bought this house. It's a two family home. I'm very nervous. How can you, is there something that you could do for them to protect them that you say, hey, I'll do the lease for you or I'll do something for you to protect you so that one, you're not nervous. And two, if anything were to happen where they don't pay or you want the property back that you can actually protect them so that they can get their home back if that's what they decide or get this tenants to pay. Right. Great question. I mean, ultimately, when you are vetting a tenant, you have you I would suggest you assume that they are not going to pay and you're <laughs> going to have to go after them. So what do you need when you're vetting a tenant? You need to see their pay stubs. You need to um, get copies of their driver's license. I can't tell you how many times um, I've got hired by a landlord and they don't even have copies of the driver's license. We don't even know the correct spelling of the name. Mm -hmm. um, definitely pay stubs, bank statements, right? Because again, if we have a bank statement, we can we can put a lien on that account. Um, if you can, you want to get personal guarantees from people who own property, right? Get mom or dad or, or sister or someone who has a house to guarantee it. Um, you know, you just have to think what's the worst case scenario. I'm going to be suing this tenant for money. Where am I going to get the money? So the vetting process is so important. You might really like someone. They might seem really nice, you know, really take your time to get to know them. Definitely do credit background checks. Um, they have companies that, you know, management companies that can really vet these people. I have a client, he sits down and has coffee with every potential t tenant he's interviewing and he just gets that feeling. And if he doesn't like them, he's not renting to them. And if he likes them, you know, so you have to trust, you, you know, are your, are your people's skills good? Do you know, you know, can you jump in? It sounds like you're going to be dating them. They're like, let me go out on a date. Let's see if I like <laughs> you, you like me. And then we'll take it from there. Exactly. I do have also, because I work a lot in Queens, a lot of, um, especially in Corona, a lot of the homeowners that I work with that want to sell their home, they decided to rent to an undocumented uh, family. So do you also work with people whether, you know, they bought the house so two ways, right? Where they bought the house, they're undocumented before you could buy a house with no documentations, but they have the deed, they have it under their name, they have their mortgage. Can they still evict someone even though they're not legally here in the country, meaning they don't have like a citizenship or a residence, but they own the home? Yeah, there's no requirement that the homeowner be a citizen or a resident. When you come into court as a as a homeowner, um, you're required to prove your case. What's required for the case is that you own the house, that you had a relationship with the client, uh, the tenant. So a deed, a, a deed, a lease, and then you know the terms that it ended or that they owe the money. There's no requirement that they be a citizen or a resident. I mean, they might have to show ID but they could show a passport, you know, just to prove that the owner is who he says he is or she says she is. And let's say, let's turn the tables around. Let's say now it's a tenant who doesn't have papers. Can you still take him to court? And can you still do that and, and take him to court? Even though they have younger kids, can they still do that? Can they still take them to court and go through that whole entire process? Yeah. So it will be the same thing. Yeah. And for and let's say because a lot of homeowners, um, what they do is they just give them a receipt or they give them cash. So yeah. you don't have anything in your account that shows, hey, this person's paying me money. Um, you just kind of use the money and you know you do whatever you want to do with it. How can you go ahead and do that eviction process? How can you prove to them like, hey, they're not paying me because you never have copies of them giving you actually money. It's just been cash. Yeah. So there was a law that passed in 2019 that says any cash paying tenant has to get a receipt. So if you're a homeowner and you're collecting rent via cash, you have to have to have to give a receipt. You know, you can just buy those little receipt books. Um, you'll have a copy for yourself and you have a copy for the tenant. You know, one of the things that I recommend is some people don't want to do a lease because they don't want to be stuck with someone that they may or may not work out with for one year to two years. But a lease is a legal document and the you can set the terms. So I've seen leases that are month to month leases. That's a great idea because it gives you all the protection as a landlord that you need to say, this is my legal contract with this tenant. This is the rent monthly rent amount, but it doesn't give you the commitment of one year. You just have to specify on there month to month. Perfect. So it's like, make sure that you get those receipts. And what happened if you don't have those receipts and the tenant's like, hey, I've been paying them, then that's going to be even a longer process at this point. It's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, you 
yeah, it gets messy. And, you know, for me, I always want my client to look as good as possible when they go into court, because the more you give the judge reason to doubt and question what's going on, the worse your case, the weaker your case gets. It sounds to me that the most important thing you need to do as a homeowner is document, document, document. Same thing when you're buying a house, when you're selling, this is why it's so important to have documents. That's why we ask you, hey, sign all these documents because you want to document everything. Really, it's for your own protection.